Thank you very much. How great it is to be here. How great it is to be together. It is certainly one of the, and I have been at a lot of conventions, I can assure you, and this is one of the best. I, and it's so great to celebrate together, to, to make sure that we face the challenges of the country and the party, and to make sure that we are successful. We accomplished a lot together since 2015, but we are facing an opposition who wants to undo all of that. So thank you. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for your dedication to your country. And thank you for the helping us with the challenges that we have ahead. Now, the, now I have a great privilege here tonight. I'm in fact uh, introducing the two young lads from Shawinigan. The Right Honourable Jan Kretchen was first elected as a Member of Parliament in 1963, a whole 25 years before I was elected for people that are keeping track back home. <laughs> Throughout his early political career, he served as Minister of National Revenue, President of the Treasury Board, Minister of Finance, and the first Minister of Finance, the first French Canadian to be the Minister of Finance, and he certainly knew how to do it. I, I, I would say not bad for a lad from Chewinigan. After a brief break from politics, he was elected as leader of the Liberal Party of Canada in 1990, become a leader of the opposition, but most importantly, he became my boss. And that was no easy task then, and it certainly is not today. I remember the first time he asked me, why are you supporting me? Well, I said, basically, if you become the leader, you will win the election. And if you, and if you become the leader, I'll win the election. In 1993, under his leadership, as I told him, we won the election and formed the government and he served as Prime Minister of Canada in 2003. In 1995, he was successful in helping keep Quebec as part of Canada in the second referendum. And I can tell you, friends, I can tell you, friends, I was there. I was there during that referendum. And I can tell you there was pressure beyond pressure. That was quite a night. I remember my wife, Frances, who was here. She was, taking a, she was taking a course in Charlottetown. And every night when she went home, uh, late in the night, all the lights were out in the farming community between Charlottetown and Madrell. The night of that referendum, every home was lit up right from Charlottetown to Madrell, and I would say right across this nation from Newfoundland to Vancouver Island and right to the north, because they knew how important it was. And I can tell you, the man I'm introducing was a big part of that. Desp and, and also, despite the pressure from our closest allies, Prime Minister Kretchen made a decision not to join the conflict in Iraq. And I remember that. Now, my note says, with the benefit of hindsight, but Kretchen had foresight. And that's what you have to have to be a great Prime Minister. And of course, it certainly proved to be the right decision. But to sum it up, what this man was so great, and I'm so proud to call him a friend. And I think more important, he calls me a friend. And that is pretty important. I always say he decided we were going to be friends. <laughs> I'd like, I would, should note that um, he served in Parliament as a member of Parliament, and we're just talking about that out back. 35 years, 10 months, and 25 days. As of today, I've been the member of Parliament for Cardigan for 34 years, 5 months, and 14 days. So I got a piece to go yet.
And as we work together at the, ta at the front of today, we will, as we look at the issues that confront us today, it's so great to have a man with such wisdom as Prime Minister Jean Chrétien. And as he speaks tonight, we should listen carefully. We will be the better for it. Now, for the man that's asking the questions, Francois Philippe Champagne. As I said, Chewinigan took over. <laughs> he was first elected in 2015, and he served as Minister of International Trade, Minister of Foreign Affairs, and currently serves as Minister of Innovation, Science, and Industry. But I think the most important thing about Francois Philippe Champagne, he's responsible for the Volkswagen plant in Ontario. He's responsible for the electric tire plant in Nova Scotia. He's, a he's important for the BioVector plant in Prince Edward Island. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what's in the water in Schwinnigan, but between Mr. Chrétien and Francois Philippe Champagne, that part of the country has produced two of the best prime uh, politicians that I ever met. So, with any further ado, it is my honor to welcome the boys from Shawinigan. Chrétien doesn't walk down the street, he tears through it. Accompanied by local candidate Eric Cunningham, he kept an entire entourage scrambling to keep up with it. At one point, he even blitzed a slow moving bus that was going down the road. Ah, Chrétien, 2,652. The Prime Minister has put us for too long in a pressure cooker. Now is the time to turn off the stove and fire the cook. Canadiens et Canadiens ont décidé. Le temps est venu de travailler ensemble pour remettre le pays sur la bonne voie. Vous exécuterez loyalement et fidèlement les pouvoirs et je m'acquitterai des responsabilités qui m'ont été confiés en qualité de premier ministre. We will do what is needed so that Canada will move in the 21st century, united from sea to sea, proud of its two official languages. Les Québécois et Québécoises ont réaffirmé la valeur de tout ce que nous avons bâti ensemble. If military action proceeds without a new resolution of the Security Council, Canada will not participate. Je pense que la façon dont nous réussissons à régler nos problèmes donne un exemple au monde qu'il est possible d'être voisin, d'être indépendant et de travailler en très bonne collaboration l'un avec l'autre. I am strong for the rights of citizens and the protection of the minority. It's what made Canada such an exceptional country. It's true that I speak on one side of my mouth. I'm not a Tory, I don't speak on both sides. <laughs> Do you have to like a lot more salad than you used to? Yeah. Okay. Please, how do you like that? Not much. Moi, je vais le There is no greater satisfaction to have the privilege to make a contribution as a member of parliament, as a minister, and eventually for me as prime minister, to make this country the best country of the world. Vive le Canada! Merci beaucoup! Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Monsieur, Madame la Présidente, Madame et Messieurs les ministres, Mesdames et Messieurs les députés, délégués libéraux, mes chers amis, it's something to be back.
and to be introduced by my good friend, Lawrence. You know, when I became Prime Minister, the first cabinet meeting, Lawrence was there. After the meeting, he called Francis, his wife, and he said, darling, I will be back on the farm in four years. <laughs> because Chrétien said, I will make what has to be done with the finance of the country. And, you know, it has to be done. I might be prime minister only one term, but I will do it. So Lawrence felt he was not to be reelected. He was a bit mistaken. He was reelected nine times after that. <laughs> but he was very useful in the cabinet. When the people will start with big theories, I will say, I'd like to know what Mr. McCauley thinks of it and everybody will come down on the ground with two feet, right on the ground, stop dreaming. So, thank you, Lawrence, for your presentation. I understand that Hillary Clinton will come later on. You know, for eight years, Bill was the president and I was the prime minister, and we met many, many times. She became a very good friend of Aline, and. Uh, one day, she played a kind of a trick. There was a summit of the Americas. And Hilary had put the name of Aline as a speaker. And Aline was not aware. <laughs> so they insisted. I said, no, I'm not making speeches. The stage is for Jean, it's not for me. So they insisted, they prepared a little speech in English and in French, to talk to all the delegates for the summit of the Americas and the, the spouses who were there. So Aline was not very happy, moved in her room, and came down, moved to the podium, and spoke to the, the delegates in Spanish only. <laughs> and nobody knew in the Canadian delegation that she was speaking Spanish. So Hilary was a very good, they were very good friends, and, and I had many occasions to discuss with her, but I'm very preoccupied to see her in Ottawa today. The Globe and Mail will get crazy. <laughs> she is an American, melding in Canadian politics. We need a royal commission. My friend lawyers in Ottawa like the Globe and Mail because if we have all the commissions that they want us to have, they will all become very rich. <laughs> Me too, I intervene at times in politics elsewhere. One day I was in the Philippines and I like very much uh, Ramos and I said he should be reelected. Oh my God. But I survived. <laughs> and another occasion, the ring election of 2015, I was in Washington, in Washington. And they asked me, what do you think? Madame Clinton is sick. She has to stop her campaign. She had some pneumonia. Oh, I said, don't worry, you know, they have medication for pneumonia, but they don't have medication for stupidity. <laughs> no. It was not meddling, I didn't name anybody. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, they say that politicians, even retired politicians like me, 
should not fill their speeches with statistics and numbers. But, but tonight, I want to talk to you about three numbers, three, three big round numbers, 30, 60, and 90. 30, because this year in October will mark 30 years since the 1993 election when the people of Canada <laughs> elected, elected the first three liberal majority governments that I had the honor to lead as prime minister. <laughs> 60, 60, because last month was the 60th anniversary of my first election to Parliament that occurred on the 8th of April, 1963. <laughs> 90. Because it is my 90th years, I will turn 90 in eight months. <laughs> and And I intend to celebrate all year long. <laughs> but relax. You will be able to invite me when I will be 100. <laughs> People say I, am, say I am an optimist, and I am. I think it is the secret to a long and happy life. But I have reason to be optimistic. I look at Canada. I look at how far we have traveled. Look at what we have accomplished together. That is why I am an optimist and I'm also a realist. Il y a 60 ans, accompagné de mon père, un machiniste dans un moulin de papier, et avec Aline, mon roc de Gibraltar, nous avons marché sous la tour de la paix, alors que je venais me faire assermenter comme nouveau député. J'avais 29 ans, j'étais un jeune avocat unilingue du Québec rural. Je ne m'étais jamais rendu plus loin au Canada que la rivière des Outaouais. Ce fut un des grands moments de ma vie. Et tout ça était dû aux citoyens de la région de Shawinigan qui m'ont fait confiance pendant 40 ans. Je n'oublierai jamais cette incroyable... Je n'oublierai jamais cette incroyable loyauté de leur part. Et je dois aussi remercier les gens de beau séjour parce que je me suis trouvé sans siège à un moment donné à cause j'avais démissionné et ils m'ont reçu en vrais Acadiens, ça veut dire extrêmement chaleureusement, comme leur député de beau séjour. Et j'ai eu vraiment un très beau séjour dans beau séjour. Le Canada de 1963 était tout à fait différent du Canada d'aujourd'hui. Il n'y avait pas de système national de santé. Si la maladie frappait fort une famille, elle pouvait tout perdre, y compris la maison familiale. Nous n'avions pas de langues officielles, nous n'avions pas de charte des droits et des libertés, notre constitution était une loi britannique, nous n'avions même pas un drapeau national qui est notre folie, une folie aujourd'hui. Et je profite de l'occasion pour saluer le nouveau roi Charles qui est couronné cette fin de semaine. Je l'ai connu en 1970, alors que la reine, le prince Philippe, la princesse Anne et lui-même, le roi d'aujourd'hui, sont venus célébrer 
le centenaire des territoires du Nord-Ouest. Et pendant quatre jours, Aline, ma fille France et moi avons été les hôtes de la famille royale dans le Grand Nord canadien. Et ce fut le début d'une amitié de 53 ans avec la famille royale. Et aujourd'hui, bon, la reine a eu le, la bonté de me donner l'ordre du mérite et je l'ai énormément apprécié. Et je souhaite au nouveau roi la meilleure des chances et beaucoup de succès dans ces lourdes tâches. My friends, we talk about these things that happen, and they did not happen by accident. They did not fall from the sky. They happened because liberal governments made them happen. I know because I was there. I'm extremely proud to have served under two of the greatest prime ministers in Canadian history, Mike Pearson and Pierre Elliott Trudeau. <laughs> Canada was never perfect. No country ever was. But we did not look back. We look ahead and move Canada forward. We made it more just. We made it more prosperous, more caring, more tolerant, and more diverse. That is what liberals do best. They see the future, and they rally Canadians together to build that future. I was there for the Medicare, for the FLY, for the Canadian Pension Plan, for the two official languages, for the patriation of the Constitution, for the Charter of Rights, for the abolition of capital punishment, for, for the permission of divorce in Canada. You know, I was there because, you know, it was Canada at its best that I lived during all these years. So, I mixed up on my page here, I guess. <laughs> I, I, I get off of the damn text once in a while and... So, you know, we did all that. It was a kind of future that was built under Mike Pearson and Pierre Trudeau. And then 30 years ago, the people of Canada turned to us again. Many of you in this room were not even born, but ask your parents. Ask anyone who was there, the Canada of 1993, was in desperate and desperate shape. We were in the worst economic crisis in half a century. We were broke. 35 cents of every tax dollar went to pay the interest on the debt, not the capital, the interest of the debt. It was robbing us of the future, your future. The International Monetary Fund was knocking at the door. The Wall Street Journal was saying we were a candidate to become a third world nation. And even worse, we were going through the worst national unity crisis in our history. The support for separatism in Quebec was at all time high. And people across the country had given up hope. As hard it is to believe in 2023, 30 years ago, millions of Canadians were giving up on Canada. 
in this hour of crisis, the Canadian people turn again to the Liberal Party and to me as leader to rebuild their hope and their trust. And that is what we did. We turned the economy around. We restored the confidence of the Canadian people. And I did not do it alone. I had a great caucus. I had fantastic minister and we had a super team working together. But we did it the Canadian way. We did it the Canadian way, in a liberal way, with a big heart. After we had cleaned up the big economic mess, we invested in people. We increased, for example, the EI parental leave to one year. We, we created the national child benefit. We made the biggest investment in post-secondary education in Canadian history. With the Millennium Scholarships, the Research Chair, and the Canadian Graduate Scholarship and others, we made Canada, we made Canada the place to be for the best and the brightest. We reversed the brain drain and turn it into a brain gain. Yes, we had a big heart, but we could also be tough. Because to govern effectively and fairly, you have sometimes to be tough. And, you know, I don't mind being tough when I had to be. You remember the Shawnian and Shake. <laughs> when I was the president of Treasury Board, I was called Dr. No. So when big banks and their friends and lobbyists came to us and they said to us that we had, they had to merge, like in the US, we got tough. We said no. That is not good for Canada, we said. That is not good for Canadians. And we said no to the bank mergers. And in 1998, 1999, and 2000, there was absolutely no problems with the financial institution in Canada compared to the problem in the South. <laughs> and when the separatists will not stop trying to destroy Canada with trick questions and sneaky referendum. We got tough. We said no, no more. And we brought in the Clarity Act. When George W. Bush, and in fact, almost the entire business establishment in Canada, said, that you have to join the invasion in Iraq. We said, we are not the 51st state. We are, not, we are an independent country. We are an independent country. We think and act for ourselves, and we said no. It was tough, but it was the right thing to do because it was true to our values as Canadians and as liberals. When you stick to your values, you cannot go wrong. That has been my experience all my life and all my political career. It was true when I had the honor of being prime minister, not just in the decisions i already mentioned, but in those we don't think of so often or we take for granted, like leading the way on the global treaty to ban land mines, 
or creating the International Court of Criminal Justice, or bringing very tough gun control laws, or to be the second country in the world to permit same-sex marriage, Or, or eliminating, eliminate, eliminating corporate funding of political parties and so much more. And we did these things because of our values. Et c'est grâce à ces valeurs que nous avons décidé de mettre de l'ordre dans nos finances publiques. Les dettes que nous venions d'hériter allait détruire le futur de nos enfants. Après 1995, après 1995, nous avons eu un autre neuf budgets à surplus sous les libéraux. Depuis 60 ans, il n'y a eu que 10 surplus budgétaires dans les finances canadiennes et M. Poliev, c'était toujours des gouvernements libéraux. Alors, les premiers déficits sont arrivés après mon départ quand Stephen Harper et Poliev sont retournés nous faire des déficits. Mais je ne devrais pas mettre le nom de Poliev avec le nom de Harper parce que je me sens mal à l'aise. Poliev est tellement négatif, tellement à droite, que Harper a de l'air raisonnable. <rires> si ça continue comme ça, il va demander à devenir membre du Parti libéral. Et nous avons bénéficié des réformes de 1995 au point de vue financier. Et c'est pourquoi le gouvernement présent a pu investir dans des programmes pour les enfants, dans les soins dentaires. Et malgré, et malgré la terrible pandémie de COVID, et que le gouvernement a dû dépenser énormément, d'ailleurs comme tous les autres gouvernements dans le monde, le présent gouvernement a réussi à garder le Canada comme le pays qui a le moins de dettes per capita de tous les pays du G7. Et au surplus, qui aurait cru qu'alors qu'autrefois qu nous étions toujours confrontés avec le chômage, aujourd'hui, c'est le manque de main dœuvre qui est le principal problème. Je n'aurais jamais pensé voir ça. De me promener dans les maritimes et dans le Québec rural et de voir des affiches partout, nous embauchons. C'est ça que je n'aurais jamais pensé voir au Canada. So, alors, c'est pourquoi je crois que les Canadiens voudront encore une fois faire confiance aux libéraux à la prochaine élection fédérale. Well, when I left office in 2003, I spoke to the Liberal Convention and I said that Liberals must never, ever lose their social conscience. It is more important today than ever. I am proud that today Canada has an activist, optimistic, socially progressive, progressive liberal government. And 
And it's because it's the Liberal Party that is there, because we are part of a strong, vibrant political tradition as old as Canada itself. It was, has made us, it's what made us the most successful political party, not just in our country, but in a democratic world. Our party never had to change its name since 1867. <laughs> that, you know, line from Laurier through King and Saint Laurent, through Pearson and Pierre Elliott Trudeau, myself and Justin Trudeau, and that, my friends, is my message to you. That is why I'm proud to celebrate my election as an MP 60 years ago, my election as prime minister 30 years ago, and, and my proud long life membership in the Liberal Party in my 90th year. And, Conclusion. Pour finir, pour finir, je voudrais vous dire, chers amis, et à tous ceux qui nous écoutent, que lorsque j'étais premier ministre et que j'allais dans les réunions internationales rencontrer les leaders des autres pays, quand je remettais le pied sur le sol canadien, je me disais, je suis donc chanceux d'être un Canadien. Je croyais, je disais à bien des gens que de tous les leaders du monde, même si c'était très difficile d'être premier ministre, je croyais que j'étais celui qui avait la tâche la plus facile. Et je comprenais pourquoi il y avait des millions et des millions de personnes dans le monde qui veulent venir partager la, la citoyenneté canadienne. You know, I was so, sh I understood all the time coming back to Canada after meeting the other leaders of the world. Why are there millions and millions of people around the globe who will give the, their shirt to come and share our so-called miseries? You know why? Because Canada is the land of freedom. Canada is the land of opportunity. Canada is the land of generosity. Canada is the land of stability. Canada is the land of tolerance. Canada is the land of the rule of law. No. No, 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 Mr. Polyev, Canada is not broken. Canada is the land that makes the envy of the world. Canada is still the best, and vive le Canada! Ça va du bien. Okay, thank you. Merci, tout le monde. Vous êtes encore en forme pas mal? 
Je suis en forme, mais oui. Eh, vous êtes encore pas mal en forme, hein? On vous regarde, tout le monde, mais écoutez... Euh... C'est parce que je bois de l'eau du lac des Piles comme toi. <rire> oui, il y a quelque chose dans l'eau à Shawinigan. Écoutez, il y a beaucoup à dire sur vous. Il y a beaucoup à parler ensemble. Mais avant de faire ça, M. Chrétien, permettez-moi de rendre hommage à quelqu'un. Je veux rendre hommage à quelqu'un qui vous a accompagné toute votre vie. Je veux rendre hommage à une personne qui a marqué votre carrière politique à plusieurs égards, parce que j'ai été témoin à plusieurs occasions. Je veux rendre hommage à quelqu'un qui a probablement été votre plus grande conseillère. Je veux rendre hommage, et évidemment, je parle ici d'une femme de cœur. Je parle d'une femme de tête. Je parle d'une femme d'exception. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand up to honor the memory of Aline Chrétien. Chrétien, parlez-nous d'elle un peu. Parce que Mme Chrétien, on parle souvent de M. Chrétien, mais j'ai eu l'opportunité de rencontrer Mme Chrétien. Dis-moi quelques mots sur elle. Vous savez, j'ai toujours dit qu'elle était mon roc de Gibraltar. Quand je l'ai demandé en mariage, je l'ai avisé que j'irais un jour en politique. C'était parti du contrat de mariage. Vous êtes un bon avocat. Et elle a tenu parole. Et elle m'a accompagné partout. Et elle me faisait honneur partout. And as I explained to you, you know, uh, she will travel a lot the world. And uh, she was many ways exceptional. I will tell you one thing. So when I had Team Canada, you remember I yes. had Team Canada, I will take 500 oh, yes, businessmen and the premiers and so on, and we had the premiers with us and their spouse. So Alien in France had to organize their program when we were in all these countries around the world. And we were traveling the premier together. So. Having the premiers with me in the plane, it was easy to solve the problems. I didn't have to confront them in front of the camera in Canada, because you know in politics it's always like that. When a mayor has a problem, he blames the provincial government. <laughs> When a provincial government has a problem, he blames the federal government. And who could you blame? And we cannot blame ne the king or the queen anymore, so we blame the Americans once in a while. <laughs> So, so Alin, when the premiers were coming back and they will discuss problems with Ottawa, you would, you know, the role of Aline was very visible because the wives of the premiers will say to the husband, "Don't give El to Jean in France, and Aline will be mad at us." So she was the best instrument for federal provincial relief. <laughs> vous avez mentionné trois chiffres. Vous avez parlé de 30, vous avez parlé de 60, vous avez parlé de 90. Moi, j'aimerais vous amener sur le chiffre 20. Le 17 mars 2003. You took probably one of the most consequential decisions for Canadians. You took a decision that was not very popular at the time. You took a decision that still marks the time today, and I bring you back, obviously, to Iraq. Tell to everyone here, yeah, a big round of applause, because that was a moment in Canada. This is like a kitchen family dinner. Tell us a bit about 
the background noise that you receive at the time. Amenez-nous dans les coulisses à l'époque, parce que ce n'était pas une décision facile où les alliés vous ont appelé. Je vous ai déjà entendu nous parler que vous avez eu quelques conversations de coulisses. Amenez-nous là. Eh bien, on savait que ça s'en venait, et on le savait des, des mois à l'avance, parce que tout le monde en parlait. Et ils essayaient de nous convaincre. Et, bon, on écoutait les arguments. In August, I was in Detroit and Windsor for, with George W. Bush for a Canada United States border problem. And I had a communication an hour and a half with him. And he tried to convince me. And I said, you know, I'm not comfortable with the documentation that they gave to me about weapon of mass destruction. Mm. So he said uh, to me, yeah, I'm sure it's true, and so on. I said, I will send you uh, some of my experts. And I said, no, no, I don't want to have your expert. I have my own expert. They will give me the information. I think I have the information. And I've written in one of my book that was not enough proof to convince the judge at the municipal court in Quebec in Shawinigan. So, so we are lucky that you, yeah, be, you are a lawyer. Yeah, of course. And so I, uh, I said, but if you don't have the UN, we won't go with you. It was six months before. And I believe that with what you have as proof of weapon of mass destruction, the UN, the UN will not approve it. And it did not. So they knew. And everybody thought I was, that Bush was to be very mad with me, but not. He, this, he said to me, or it was his chief of staff said to me, and one of the two, we were all talking about it because I said, you must be very mad at me. They said, no, we're disappointed. We they told me we, said, we expected Canada to be with us. Before of what I was telling, because I made speeches before that, I was in Chicago, for example, and so on. They said, oh, that is the old fox, Christian, who is uh, preparing himself, but at the end of the day, he will be with us. And they said, we did not believe you, and we should not believe you. So you did not double-cross us, you had told us. And I know others who had said yes and were not there. For me, I was frank. I had told them the truth that I delivered. And and Tony Blair, in South Africa, we had a beer after a meeting, and Bruce Hartley was there, and uh, the lady prime minister of uh, New Zealand, uh, Madame Clark, was there, yeah. another person. And Tony had a different argument. He will tell me, Jean, we have to give rid of Saddam Hussein is a terrible dictator. And I said, Tony, if we are in the business of replacing guys we don't like, why don't we replace in the family the, the leader of the Zimbabwe next door? We were in South Africa. You know, Mugabe, you know, I'm not very comfortable with him. Oh, he said, John, there is a big difference between Mugabe and Saddam Hussein. Oh, I said, yes, there is a big distinction. Saddam has no oil. <laughs> he did not talk to me for a year after that. Vous avez été premier ministre, certes, mais les gens se rappellent de vous aussi comme un jeune militant du Parti libéral. We are with a group of people here, Prime Minister. Uh, we have about one-third of all the people in this room which are young people. And believe it or not, we have 44% of people that it's their very first convention. Please raise your hand if it's your first convention. Look at that. Prime Minister, you must have one advice or two for these young people who are looking at you and, and a career of service. Dites-nous un peu dans vos premières, votre première Assemblée libérale. 
Parlez-nous un peu de votre expérience. Qu'est-ce que vous diriez à ces jeunes-là qui sont en train d'additionner? Parce qu'une chose que vous m'avez dit en politique, qu'est-ce qu'on fait? On additionne. Comment on fait avec ces jeunes-là qui sont avec nous? Parlez-nous de votre expérience quand vous étiez un jeune militant. Bien, moi, je vais vous dire, je suis devenu avocat, mais je ne voulais pas être un avocat. Je voulais être un architecte. Mais mon père trouvait que j'étais un enfant qui avait beaucoup d'énergie, voulait avoir un politicien dans la famille. Et il a décidé très jeune que j'allais devenir un politicien. Alors, comme un père entraîne son fils à devenir un joueur de hockey, à 13 ans, je distribuais des pamphlets, je posais des pancartes sur les murs, je plaçais les chaises pour les assemblées politiques. À 13 ans? Et à 13 ans, 14 ans, 15 ans. Puis quand c'était le temps de choisir, quand it was the time to choose a profession, my dad had trained me. I said, I want to be an architect. Dad said, you will never be elected as an architect. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I wanted to be an architect. So he said to me, you go to the law school. And in those days, when dad said something, we'll listen. Apparently, it's not like that anymore. <laughs> and I went to it's the law school. And the first, you know, I was a... Uh, I joined the Liberal Club. Second year, I was the president. And I was 23. I was in Ottawa for the convention that selected Mike Pearson to be the leader. I was the president of the Liberal Club at Laval University. I was. I had been elected vice president of the Canadian University Liberal Federation. And I was not speaking English. <laughs> But I, I was, they understood me that way. And We still do. Oh, yeah. We still do. So I started very young. And I will tell you one thing about politics. One day, it was, I was interviewed in Shaoryan for a film, uh, for a TV. And there was a person, Omer El, who was an old liberal organizer. He was very old. He was 75. And, <laughs> And he had a very unusual face with big cracks and beautiful blue eyes. And the, the guy said, that we don't see faces like that very often. Can we interview him? So I asked Omer. I said, Omer, il faut qu'il parle à la télévision. Il n'est jamais trop tard pour commencer. And so he gave an interview. They said, how come you're still organizing? Oh, he said, yeah. I said, he had told them I started very young. And he said, in politics, it's interesting, it's challenging, and we make friends. And we never let a friend down. So it's why I'm still organizing for Jean. So, get involved. You might even become prime minister or minister of everything, <laughs> or, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's fun and it is useful and is, you know, I, I wanted to be a politician and I, I did that all my life. And when they dump on politician, I don't like it because we're there to serve, we're there to make life better for citizens. Okay. We can influence the movement of the country, and we do this. And we have the privilege to feel that we can debate. We don't win all the arguments, no. but we're making progress together. Alors, allez-y, les jeunes. It's a lot of fun. So you get it. Let's go together. Monsieur le Premier ministre, vous avez déjà dit que personne n'a le monopole des bonnes idées. Et si vous en avez une bonne, prenez garde, car peut-être que je voudrais la voler. C'est quoi la meilleure idée que vous avez prise à quelqu'un d'autre que vous avez mis en application? Dites-nous ça ensemble, on est en famille sur ce Non, sujet. beaucoup, beaucoup. Oui? Ah, oh, oui, oui. Oh, oui. Oh, oui. Donnez-nous en une ou deux, là. on est en eh famille. Oui, mais quand ils vous disent « fais ça <rire> », puis que vous le faites, puis qu'ensuite qu'ils viennent vous dire « vous avez volé mon idée, je leur dis, ben, fermez-la. 
me dites pas de faire quelque chose qui a de l'allure, je vais le faire. And when I was traveling in the world, I had to explain that because we, the liberal, with the radical center. People, when I'm traveling in the world, they are all confused. You're liberal in Canada. In Europe, a liberal is a center right. Yeah. Very strong on human rights, though. But they are sometimes a bit conservative. And in the United States, they're perceived as left winger. So I had to explain what was a liberal in Canada. I was saying Canada is when the people on the left says of you, you're a right winger. And when the people on the right says of you, you're a left winger. You're a good Canadian yes, liberal, liberal <laughs> Christian. Alors, on a fini? Non, 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 on n'a pas fini. Oh, non, I'm not about to let you go. We have another few minutes, and you know, look, people like to hear you. No, we're going, we're going. For the good folks who are organizing, we're keeping the stage. Um, <laughs> listen, um, we've seen pictures of you with a guy which was called Clinton, yeah. which you seem to have a very, very close relationship. I remember once, you kind of even avoided the Secret Service together, and you started running somewhere with him. The only thing he didn't know is that you run much faster than him. And I think we'll have a picture that shows that you even helped President Clinton to climb a certain wall. And since Chrétien is faster than him, I think you kind of push him across the wall. Yeah. Now, we're supposed to have the picture. It's going to come. Don't worry. The folks, are, you know, it's, that's how technology is. But you wonder what happened is this. Well, tell us. We were in a G7 or G8 in, in uh, Great Britain. We were in a whole castle in the rural part. And when we are at this meeting, we stop for coffee breaks. And the coffee breaks become bilaterals. So I was there with my friend Bill Clinton, and we went to have a chit chat. We went in the back, and suddenly, there was a forest there. <laughs> and suddenly, I realized there was nobody gone. I said, Bill, we escape. <laughs> <laughs> Alors, on est parti à courir, puis on est rentré dans le bois. Et là, ils nous ont perdu de vue. Et là, on a marché dans le bois. We walk in the bush, and we walk in the bush. And the guys, were, the bodyguards were getting crazy. <laughs> so we came back from a field, and when they saw us, about half a dozen bodyguards of Americans uh, joined. Two, and two, they were not happy with him. And for me, I, you know, I don't need bodyguards. I grabbed them by the neck. <laughs> and, and no show it again and shake on the stage. And so when we arrive at the so-called picture you don't have. I'm responsible for innovation. Yeah. <laughs> you have some work to do. <laughs> and so when we arrived at the wall, it was about six feet of stone, and there was a ramp in concrete. So it, we had to go around. I said, Bill, we, we have to, let's jump. <laughs> and you know how competitive I am. I was up, my feet was on the ramp, and poor Bill could not get up. <laughs> he was having too many uh, McDonald's in those days. <laughs> now he does not eat them anymore. And uh, so that became a very famous picture. You know, because I, I had beaten the American that day nicely. I was only 14 years older than him. <laughs> so, Prime Minister, uh, I see that the clock is running and flashing, so that must mean that our time is gone. But in conclusion, you know, I've been in the hall for the last two days, and everyone has a question. The 4,000 people in this room have a question. What are you going to do when you retire? 
Retirement does not want me. That's a problem. <laughs> but you have to keep working. I enjoy it. And uh, if you can make some contributions, it's good. Because, you know, now we live longer. You know, I remember when we started the old age pension plan. You know, the average of life expectancy was 65 years. It's why they pick up 65. <laughs> no, that was the average to help those who were above average. I hope there was other reasons. No, 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 that was, you know, it was a hell of a big. <laughs> There's a few And now the, the problem, if I, my family, you know, we're trying to increase the leverage. You know, I had a sister who was 98, and I had a brother who died at 99, so I said to Julie, faut que tu battes ton frère Gabi. Gabi est mort à 99 ans. Faut que tu plus que 99 ans. You have to go to 100, I said. And she said to me, Jean, I will have to go to 100 because you want one of us to go to 100. And the three who are left are all boys. And it's only us, the girls, who can go to 100. <laughs> so when she turned 100, she called the nurse. And the nurse said, what's wrong? She said, I'm 100 years old since 10 minutes, and I wanted to tell that to somebody. <laughs> so it's the average, the, the gene, the pollution of my youth, because Shawnian was an extremely polluted city. Oh, it's much better now. There's a good MP. Yeah. <laughs> He came to see the old man to know how to do it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Premier Minister of Canada, Jean Chrétien. Merci tout le monde. Let's seize the moment. Let's be ambitious. Vive le Canada! Uh, okay. Thank you. Vive le Canada! Merci. Merci, Merci. tout le monde.